please welcome Kristen Malik with Unlearn Yourself. I am a junkie. If you were like the majority of Americans who didn't read the program, you immediately thought of drugs. But that isn't the only definition. A junkie is a person with a compulsive or obsessive habit with something. With that definition, aren't we all junkies? A junkie of social media or television, Oreos and ice cream, or even sleep? While I wish I could say I was a junkie of sleep, I am a junkie of self-improvement. For real. Even my therapist recently told me that I needed a self-help vacation. <laughs> so how does one become a self-improvement junkie? The first step is self-awareness, which naturally means taking every single online personality test ever created, not just once, but multiple times, because they could have changed the test. It is interesting to note that some results did change over time. And while sometimes the tests in our life do change, more often we change. Constant self-reflection is vital to a self-improvement junkie, which leads to my next point. Exposure to different thought processes. I mostly do this through reading a lot. Last year, my friend gave me her copy of Future Shock. Though written in 1970, it's surprisingly accurate for today. One particular line stuck in my junky heart. The illiterate of the 21st century are not those who cannot read or write. It is those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Learning and relearning is my jam. I am a lifelong learner. College professor by day, self-improvement junkie by night. But what was this unlearning concept, and why hadn't I heard of it? Unlearning means to discard something completely. Most often used in relation to skill development, people usually unlearn things like old technology, bad habits, or even their ex's phone number. <laughs> what if we were to take this unlearning concept and apply it to our personal beliefs? Beliefs such as gun control, which I myself had to examine recently. Take a moment to think about where you stand on this issue. Got it? Now think about why you believe what you believe. Chances are your beliefs were shaped by your upbringing and your family or friend influences. My best friend is a born and raised Nebraskan. 4-H, dad was a farmer. He sold three cows to pay for her wedding. Her friends go on hunting trips. It's safe to say she's probably more gun friendly. Personally, as you've heard, I am from the Northeast. Almost no gun exposure, no hunting trips, and no family or friends who own guns. If you were raised like me, you're probably indifferent or maybe not as gun friendly. The twist? An extended family member dies and I end up with a lot of guns. I learned, I relearned, I read all those argumentative research articles on my social media. I read the comments, all of them. I empathized, I even tweaked my views a little, but I didn't unlearn, not initially. Unlearning means to throw away your preconceived notions, have zero opinions, to look at objectively at both sides thoroughly with no implicit bias to make an informed decision. That's been my personal goal over the past year, is to look at every controversial issue, break it down, unlearn my beliefs, and figure out what I, Kristen Malik, believes. This extends beyond controversial issues to all societal constructs. Society told me that not having children was unwomanly, that if I had one, I had to give them a sibling, that success meant degree, marriage, house, children, in that order. So what do you believe? My challenge for every single one of you here tonight is to take one topic, any topic, figure out why you believe what you believe, then throw it away. Do the research, 
Figure out who you are and what you believe. Put down your junky habits of social media and television, Oreos and ice cream, and unlearn yourself. <laughs>